Monday after Sexagesima, morning meditation, February 8th, 2021. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, first choice as teacher in moral theology, act of faith in the presence of God, in nomina patria fili, spiritu sancti, amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, pana dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or Penobis peccatoribus, nuc ne hor mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria, Filia, the Spirit de Sancto, Sicud Eret in Principio, nuc et Semper, in Secula, Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful, by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant that same spirit, that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Morning meditation, the will of God to save all men. Our Holy Redeemer has ransomed us from eternal death at the price of his own blood, and he does not wish to see these souls of ours lost, which have cost him so much. When he sees souls that are constraining him by their sins to sentence them to hell, he, as it were, weeps with compassion for them and says, and quote, and wherefore will ye die, O house of Israel? Return ye and live. Ezekiel 18.31 My children, why will you destroy and damn yourselves when I have died upon a cross to save you? Return to me as penitence, and I will restore to you the life you have lost. The Apostle St. Paul teaches that God willeth the salvation of all. 
quote, he will have all men to be saved, 1 Timothy 2, 4. And St. Peter writes, quote, the Lord dealeth patiently for your sake, not willing that any should perish, but that all should return to penance. 2 Peter 9. For this end, the Son of God came down from heaven, was made man, and spent 33 years in labors and sufferings, and finally shed his blood and laid down his life for our salvation. And shall we forfeit our salvation? Thou, my Savior, did spend thy whole life in securing my salvation. And in what have I spent so many years of my life? What fruit hast thou hitherto repeated, reaped from me? I deserve to be cut off and cast into hell. But thou, quote, desirest not the death of a sinner, but that he be converted and live. Ezekiel 33, 11. Yes, O God, I leave all and turn myself to thee. I love thee, and because I love thee, I am sorry for having offended thee. Accept of me and suffer me not to forsake thee any more. How much did not the saints do to secure their eternal salvation? How many nobles and kings have forsaken their kingdoms and estates and shut themselves up in cloisters? How many young persons have forsaken their country and friends to dwell in caves and deserts? And how many martyrs have laid down their lives under the most cruel tortures? And why? To save their souls. And what have we done? Woe to me who, although I know that death is near at hand, yet think not of it. No, my God, I will no longer live at a distance from thee. Why? Do I delay? Is it that death may overtake me in the miserable state in which I am now? No, my God, do thou assist me to prepare for death. O oh God, how many graces has my Savior bestowed on me to enable me to save my soul? He has caused me to be born in the bosom of the true church. He has many times pardoned me by my transgressions. He has favored me with many lights and sermons and prayers and meditations and communions and spiritual exercises. And often has he called me to his love. In a word, how many means of salvation has he granted me when he has not granted others? And yet, O oh God, when shall I detach myself from the world and give myself entirely to thee? Behold me, O Jesus, I will no longer resist. Thou hast obliged me to love thee, and I desire to be wholly thine. Do thou accept of me, and disdain not the love of a sinner who has hitherto so much despised thee. I love thee, my God, my love, and my all have pity on me. O Mary, for thou art my hope. Spiritual reading. The power of the passion of Jesus Christ to enkindle divine love in every heart. Father Balthazar Alvarez, a great servant of God, used to say that we must not think we have made any progress in the way of God until we have come to keep Jesus crucified ever in our heart. And St. Francis of Sales says that, quote, the love which is not the offspring of the passion is feeble, unquote. Yes, because we cannot have a more powerful motive for loving God than the passion of Jesus Christ, by which we know that the Eternal Father, to manifest his exceeding love for us, was pleased to send his only begotten Son upon earth to die for us sinners. Hence the Apostle says that God, through the excess of love, wherewith he loved us, will that the death of his Son should convey life to us. Quote, for his exceeding charity, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together in Christ. Ephesians 2.5 and this was precisely the expression used by Moses and Elias on Mount Tabor in speaking of the passion of Jesus Christ. They did not know how to give it any other appellation than an excess of love. Quote, and they spoke of his excess, which he should consummate in Jerusalem. Luke 9, 31. When our Savior came into the world, the shepherds heard the angels sing, Glory to God in the highest, Luke 2, 14. But the humiliation of the Son of God in becoming man through his love for man, might have seemed rather to obscure than to manifest his divine glory. But no, there was no means by which the glory of God could have been better manifested to the world than by Jesus Christ dying for the salvation of mankind. Since the passion of Jesus Christ has made us know the perfection of the divine attributes, it has made us know how great is the mercy of God 
in that a God was willing to die to save sinners and to die, moreover, by a death so painful and ignominious. St. John Chrysostom says that the passion of Jesus Christ was not an ordinary suffering, nor his death a simple death like that of other men. It has made us know the divine wisdom. Had a Redeemer been merely God, he could not have made satisfaction for man. For God could not make satisfaction to himself in place of man, nor could God make satisfaction by means of suffering, for he is impassable. On the other hand, had he been merely man, man could not have made satisfaction for the grievous injury done by him to the divine majesty. What then did God do? He sent his only very Son, true God with the Father, to take human flesh, so that as man he might by his death pay the debt due to the divine justice, and as God might make full satisfaction. The Passion, moreover, made us know how great is the divine justice. St. John Chrysostom says that God reveals to us the greatness of his justice, not so much by hell in which he punishes sinners, as by the sight of Jesus on the cross. Since in hell creatures are punished for their sins of their own, but on the cross we might behold a God cruelly treated in order to make satisfaction for the sins of men. What obligation is Jesus Christ to die for us? Quote, he was offered because it was his own will. Isaiah 53, 7. He might have justly abandoned man to his perdition, but his love for us would not let him see us lost. Wherefore, he chose to give himself up to so painful a death in order to obtain for us salvation. Quote, he hath loved us and delivered himself up for us. Ephesians 5, 11. From all eternity, he had loved man. Quote, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Jeremiah's. 31 verse 3. But then, seeing that his justice obliged him to condemn man and to keep him at a distance, separated eternally from himself, his mercy urged him to find a way by which he might be able to save him. But how? By making satisfaction himself to the divine justice by his own death. And consequently, he willed that there should be affixed to the cross whereupon he died the sentence of condemnation to eternal death which man had merited in order that he might remain there canceled in his blood. Quote, blotting out the writing of the decree that was against us, which was contrary to us. He hath taken the same out of the way, fastening it to the cross. Colossians 2.14 And thus, through the merits of his own blood, he pardons all our sins. Quote, forgiving you all offenses, Colossians 2, 13. And at the same time, he spoiled the devils of the rights they had acquired over us, carrying along with him a, in triumph as well our enemies as ourselves, who were their prey. Quote, and despoiling the principalities and powers, he had exposed them confidently in open show, triumphing over them in himself. Colossians 2, 15. On which Theophlacet comments, quote, as a conqueror in triumph, carrying with him the booty and the enemy. Concluding prayer, I give you thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me, I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triumph God, keep my resolutions and keep them well, for the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive, by her loving hands, the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me, I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee. And I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay? That thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I've been, even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite God goodness. 
Give me perseverance in thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen apatri et fili, spiritu sancti. Amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.